Hey guys, I was just tidying up around the place and I came across this in my box of junk. It's a uh, battery conditioner, Cosmo brand. Battery conditioner, Cosmo Energy Tech Core. I actually got this as part of a package deal with um, my airsoft gun. I got my airsoft gun, my P90, and they gave me a few batteries and a charger and this little battery conditioner and some, you know, some pellets and whatnot. Um, I've never actually used this for its intended purpose. I've just chucked it to the side and kind of forgot about it until now. And I thought we'll have a look inside because um, it's really lightweight. There's not much to it, so I'm pretty sure there's not going to be much inside. You can see I've already had a go at it. Um, I kind of already know what's inside. But, yeah, there, it wasn't very much at all. So um, this is for a, a nickel metal hydride. Well, it came with my nickel metal hydride batteries, so it may be set up for nickel metal hydride batteries, just like this one here. Nickel metal hydride, 8.4 volt, 1500 milliamp hour, just like a general power pack. Um, I never use it because nickel metal hydrides don't really need conditioning as such. There's no such thing as um, the memory effect when it comes to nickel metal hydride. Even nickel cadmium batteries that you come across, like in your battery drills or your remote control cars or whatever they're used in, don't exhibit memory effect. That's a misnomer. It's a, uh, a myth and it's not true. What they do exhibit is uh, general wear and tear. So under high use, like in a remote control car or a battery drill, the uh, nickel metal, uh, sorry, nickel cadmium batteries, they will last about a thousand charges, maybe a bit more with current tech, but as a rule of thumb, about one to one and a half thousand charges, then they just wear out. It's just how it is. Um, if you treat them really nice, and you discharge them gently and charge them gently. You might get two to two and a half thousand charges, maybe more, um, but they will eventually wear out and that's how it is. The true memory effect is actually the growing of uh, crystals inside the battery from precise charge and discharge rates, like what you'll find in laboratory or in a satellite when they used to use the nickel cadmiums in satellites. They were charging to millivolt values, like that precise. You'll never get that in a battery drill or a remote control car or anything. So, um, and it was also a different battery chemistry. It wasn't a nickel nickel cadmium like what you have in your, in your remote control car. It was a different nickel, uh, sorry, different cadmium based battery. Um, so generally you won't get memory effects. So this sort of thing, it might make you feel good. It might help cycle the batteries and give you a little bit of an edge in like a, yeah, if you're running the ragged edge, trying to get that last little bit for your competition use. Maybe it'll help, but for average everyday use, ah, there's not much point to them really. Just, just use a battery till it's flat, and then just stick it on the charger. But anyway, enough about that. Um, it can be a bit of a controversial topic about, you know, memory effect and charging. But let's pull this thing apart, and I'll show you what's inside. So it's one screw, and we're in. So I'll get rid of the case, and you can see there it's really not that complicated. I'll zoom in a little bit, and we'll point out some parts. Alright, so you can see the two wires are coming in here. We've got our positive and negative. The black one here is the negative. An indicator LED that lights up while it's discharging and it will turn off once it's finished. We've got a little diode labeled ZD1 here. That's a Zena diode. We'll come back to that in a sec. Then we've got a, a resistor for that Zena diode, so we're not going to be pushing too much power through it. This one is for the LED, so it's a current limiting resistor for the LED. Two big power resistors here, like they're like five watts or three watts or something each. And then we've got a transistor here. This transistor is what's actually doing the switching to turn these on and off, the power coming through these. So the Zeno diode, for those who don't know what a Zeno diode is, it's basically a diode that works like a normal diode, allows current to pass in one direction but not the other, except there's a small difference in that there's a voltage rating on these, and when you exceed that voltage rating, it allows the, the current to flow in the opposite direction. So it's like, you imagine a damn wall that's filling up with water, and once you hit the top, the water overflows. The Zener diode is kind of the same idea. The damn wall will stop the current flowing in the reverse direction through the diode, but once the water or the voltage fills up, it'll spill over and it will conduct in both directions. So what they're doing here is that Zener diode will conduct when the battery voltage is above a certain voltage. So that will be set to a voltage that corresponds with a flat battery. And when you plug your battery in, if the voltage is above being flat, like you've got some charge there, 
This inodiode will conduct, it will turn the transistor on and then allow the power to flow through these two resistors and it will just burn that, that power as heat. Once the voltage in the battery drops, because the batteries have now become flat, that xenodiode will stop conducting and it will turn off the transistor, which will then turn off the whole circuit and it won't over discharge your batteries. So that's what's actually doing the switching or doing the sensing of the voltage to then tell the transistor to switch on and off. So it's a really basic circuit. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put a, a drawing here of the schematic and um, we'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So here's our schematic. Pretty simple stuff, only a few components there. Battery connects between positive and negative here. Our voltage comes in. No current can flow here yet because our transistor is turned off. When the voltage hits the uh, zener here, we've got a 5.6 volt zener. If our vo battery voltage is above 5.6 volts, it'll conduct. Normally the diode can only conduct in the direction of the arrow. So our LED here, it conducts this way. It blocks that way. This one is the same. It'll conduct this way, but block this way until we reach the rated voltage. At which point, it'll conduct in the reverse direction. So if our battery voltage is above 5.6 volts, we will conduct our um, voltage through to the base of the transistor, through a current limiting resistor here. Once we have a voltage here, that will then allow our current to flow through these two power resistors at about 22 and a half uh, ohms, because they're in parallel, so it's, it's halved. That will then come through and then out to our negative. So we're running our battery through these two resistors and just burning off that power as heat. And we've, of course, got the LED here with a small current limiting resistor, and that just illuminates whenever we've got power flowing, um, just to show us that the circuit is operating. It's just like an on light. Once our voltage here, on the positive rail here, reaches 5.6, drops below that, this will stop conducting. It will then block like a normal diode. No voltage to the base of our transistor. The transistor turns off, like turning off the switch and the whole thing powers down. That way, the, uh, our battery can't discharge below this voltage here, 5.6 volts. So what I might do now is we'll hook this up to our power supply and just give it a bit of a tweak with some multimeters and just see how it works. All right, so we're plugged in here with our battery conditioner into our power supply. We've got the fluke here on volts and the unity on milliamps. So that's going to be the current we're pulling through the system and that's going to be our simulated battery voltage. If you watch the uh, LED, you will see that turning on and off as we hit the, around about 5.6 volts. Now the transistor is actually a high sincerity microelectronics brand, a, um, a very reputable brand which I've never ever heard of before. But it's a uh, HE8050S and surprisingly I did find a data sheet. So this transistor, it's a 20 volt 700 milliamp. NPN transistor. So it's just a standard kind of general purpose transistor. Um, we'll put 700 milliamps through it and see if it doesn't pop. Give it a good test. Anyway, let's crank this thing up. If you watch the voltage going up compared to the uh, current, you'll see that suddenly spike up once we reach our um, around about 5.6 volts. The LED also will come on to indicate that we've got conduction through that transistor. So they come up 3 volts, nothing yet, 4 volts. Got a little bit of leakage current because we're using high quality components. But once you reach around 5.6, a little bit more, there we go, just under 6 volts. We get a good amount of, so it's just on the threshold about here. Hit 6 volts and we've got 134 milliamps flowing. And that LED is starting to glow pretty brightly now. So you've got a battery that's, what's this one at? 8.4 volts. So we've got a fully charged battery now. We're pulling 350 milliamps. That's going to drop down over time as we're burning off all that energy as heat. And then around about six, five and a half to 6 volts, it goes out. There's a little bit of leakage, so... You know, depending on how long, if you leave it for a few days, it might drop down a lot lower at a very, very, very slow rate, though. So let's crank this thing up. You got 300, 400, 5. Oh, we've got overload on the uh, 
There we go. 500. No, doesn't like it more than 500. All right, we switched range because we've got the overload, so let's keep going up. 500. Okay, on 600. When we're going to hit 7 at about 16 volts, I think. 16 volts. So that's right there. That's the maximum power we can pull through that transistor. 16 volts. I can smell the heat off of those resistors too. It's getting a bit... Oh, that is pretty hot. So that's, that's burning up quite a bit of heat. That's... Yeah. 700 milliamps at 16 volts. We're looking at about 11 watts. Pretty much smack on 11 watts. So those uh, resistors, they have to be at least 5 watt rated. And there is... A good amount of heat coming off of that actually so yeah I wouldn't say that's rated for continuous duty especially in the, um, the plastic container it's, in. it's got vents but you know that's gonna get a bit a bit toasty in there so yeah for an 8 volt battery 12 volt battery should be okay I wouldn't go much higher than that but um I'm not gonna use it so I might relegate it to the parts bin might be able to pull that Zener diode and the LED transistor and whatnot Anyway, that's what we've got inside a basic power conditioner for your batteries and how it works. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.